All right, uh, here is the annual Escape from Tarkov weapons tier list. Um, quite a bit has changed since I did uh, my last episode of this, and quite a lot has stayed the same. So for the sake of the video's length, and also just to not be boring, if something has not really changed a whole lot over the past year, I'm probably not going to spend as much time talking about it, just so I'm not boring people by treading over the same exact ground. But with that out of the way, we're going to start with the shotguns because I think most of the stuff here has stayed pretty consistent, uh, starting with all the pump actions. They're all going into C tier. The M870, the MP133, and the Mossberg 590. The pump actions aren't that great because there's just better options available really, really quickly and there's no real reason to use them. Um, they fire too slow to really be competitive with the other weapons in the game, especially with how effective armor is. In real life, if you get shot by 12 gauge buckshot or a slug and you're, even if you're wearing armor, it's probably gonna, it's gonna knock the wind out of you if not put you on your ass. So it's, that would be really terrible to add to Tarkov because of stun mechanics, who loves those? So it's really difficult to put in a 12 gauge shotgun properly, so unfortunately all the pump actions are just really not good in the game. Um, they serve a certain purpose and that is early wipe or, or if you're just Lee Harvey Oswald and really good at hitting heads, but otherwise they're not the best, so they're gonna go into C tier. Joining them in C tier is the revolver shotgun, the MTS-255. I love the revolver shotgun. It's goofy, it's cowboy, I love it. But its practical applications are fairly limited. Um, yes, at the early wipe, it's pretty good because it shoots slightly faster than the pump actions, but you're only working with five shells in your cylinder, and unfortunately, that's just not the best so it has a certain place but it doesn't last long that is going to be another c tier item uh the taz 106 the reputed scab sniper a lot of tarkov players know the feeling of getting head eyes by a scab across the map with buckshot out of this thing which thankfully is not a common occurrence anymore i don't think scabs have been tuned down quite a bit so they're not completely stupid to fight against so I can't really give this thing the mythical status that it once had, um, so nowadays it's just it's just trash, that's really all it is. Um, it's a total meme weapon, if people are using it, and if you're able to get kills with a Taz, that very much speaks to your skills as a player, and not so much to the weapon's merits. So yeah, the Taz obviously is going into F tier. Uh, these weapons are staying in the exact same place. The uh, the Saiga 12, it's an S tier weapon. It shreds through everything. You get a 20 round magazine, you load flechette into this, you're killing basically anything you put your, your sight on. It is a terrifying weapon. If you get close to somebody and you have this thing, nine times out of 10, you are utterly devastating that person. You are turning them into mulch that is sold at Home Depot. It is terrifying. It's really good. I love it. S tier. The MP153 is going to go into A tier because it's basically just a Saiga 12, but instead it has a, a tube and uh, it takes a while to reload. So it's not as good as the Saiga, but it will still turn somebody into mulch if you get close enough to them. So that's going into A tier. The MP155 is basically just an MP153, but slightly different. Uh, it has better ergo, um, so I guess if you want to put a sight on it, you're going to be aiming with your shotgun a lot more, but it has worse MOA. I'm not sure how MOA affects shotgun spread, but yeah, there's really not a significant difference between the 153 and 155, so the 155 is also going to be going into A tier. Then we have the Benelli M3. Look, I, I really want to love this thing. I really do. It's 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 a semi-automatic shotgun that has a 13 shell capacity. That sounds like it would be the king of close quarters, just utter devastation. Unfortunately, this isn't the case due to the fact that it fires a lot slower than all of the other semi-automatics. I don't know. It's like an inertia-operated recoil system, or maybe it's recoil-operated. I don't know the specifics, but it's a different recoil operation system, whereas the Saiga 12, MP153, and 155 are apparently operated by gas. I don't know the technical reason. It just fires slower in Tarkov, and unfortunately, that's not very good when you love to shove a shotgun barrel into people's faces. So... 
I can't, I can't place it with the other ones. It's still solid. It's devastating. If you want to load AP-20s into it and play a little bit more reserved, then it's a great weapon for that. But it's not the best shotgun. So I'm going to put it in the B tier. Uh, the KS-23. Good God, I am so glad that this thing is not a common sight anymore. When this thing was first added, you couldn't play factory. You just couldn't. There was a 90% chance you were just going to get flash banged or your kneecap was going to get blown off. Nowadays, it's not at all a common sight, which is really freaking good. Um, despite this, it'll still send your kneecaps to a different area code, so it's still a solid A tier. I'm glad it's not freaking everywhere anymore. Uh, the double barrel, I love it as a meme weapon and it's okay as a budget weapon. I'm gonna put it in the B tier. Um, I think that's a fair place for it. Then we have the MP18. I prefer the MP18 as a meme weapon over the double barrel for a couple reasons, but anyone who's using the MP18 knows it's a meme weapon. They're not, they're not taking it very seriously. They're taking on the challenge of having one opportunity to take somebody out before either they just get leveled or that person manages to scurry away. And this is why this weapon is awesome because there is so much risk which makes the satisfaction of dropping somebody that much higher, especially if they've got like a slick or just any high quality kit and you kill them with this thing. That is one of the best feelings you can possibly have in this game. It is just the ultimate level of peak satisfaction. It's not gonna go well often, but when it does, it's fantastic. So I'm gonna give that an A tier, but I can't give it an S tier because I think there's an even better meme weapon. The sawed off. Oh, I am so happy they added. This thing is dumb. It is, it's really dumb, but it's simultaneously really good. I don't know why. I bring this thing in on my normal runs. I'll be fully kitted out and I'll just throw this thing on my hip because why not? You put two flechette in that, you put it on double tap. Let's say you run out of ammo or someone pushes really aggressively in your face. You just whip that thing out and all of a sudden, blam. Problem is gone. It's simultaneously a meme weapon and a really good secondary, especially with the faster switch, which applies to this thing because it goes in your pistol slot. Um, you can punish people who push really, really close to you. Now, if they have a teammate, then tough luck, but uh, it's just, it's so dumb, it's so funny, and I love it so much. It's going into S tier. Alrighty, the pistols. I'm gonna go through this one really quick because pistols in Tarkov are kind of just not good. If you were to ask every player in Tarkov if they used a pistol, of those that say yes, 50% of them are gonna be lying, and another 30% of them will say they use a pistol, but that just means it's gonna be in their holster and they don't pull it out basically ever. Then the other 20% that actually do use pistols, most of them are going to be using either the SR1 MP or the 5.7. These are the pistols that people use when they actually want to either have a secondary to protect themselves from when they're using like a bolt action or something like that, or if they're doing a rat run. Because of that, these are gonna go into S. The USP used to be a part of those. Unfortunately, 45 ACP AP is now very, very difficult to obtain. So it's not nearly as common a choice anymore. And for that reason, it's gonna go into B. The Glock 18 is also used, but it's mostly just by people who are tired of trying to do stirrup with a regular pistol and just say, screw it, go into factory with 50 rounders and this thing and use it as a discount um, SMG. So that's gonna go into A tier. Um, once stirrup is done though, it's never touched again. The APS and APB have some usage. I'm not a huge fan, but I get the point. Those are gonna go into C tier. Uh, the 357 revolver, it does have some good ammo. It can be used to penetrate soft levels of armor. I'll, I'll put that into C tier as well. Uh, the TT and the golden TT, they have the same stereotype, except one is flashier. And it's, I, I've made enough jokes about it being Stalin's favorite behind the ear descent clear. You already know the drill. They're not good weapons though. They're just memes. That's going into D tier. The RSH-12. This thing is actually really, really good. People don't use it that often because its ammo is just kind of inconvenient to get, but it is really good. It is really, really good. I made a whole video on it. I had an absolute blast when I was using it. It is a terrifying weapon because it might be a pistol, 
but it ain't shooting a pistol round. So that thing doesn't care about your armor. It doesn't care about your spine. It's tearing through both of them. That thing is going into S tier. And then with the exception of one pistol, basically everything else is going into F tier. It, they, why? What, unless you are doing a very specific thing for stirrup or maybe you actually own a pistol in real life and you want to carry it in Tarkov, there's no reason to use pistols in Tarkov. They're just... They're not good. They, they, they need to do something to make them more viable, but it's hard to do because... I mean, the whole point of a pistol in real life is it's compact and easy to conceal or carry and you don't really need to do that in Tarkov because everybody's already killing each other, so... I don't know, unless they make it so you can sneak one in to shoot Lightkeeper in the back of the head, there's not much of a purpose for them. So, yeah, the rest of them are going into F tier, except for one. And that is the 1911. Um, yeah, I've already made enough jokes about the 1911. I'm putting it into S tier. It's just a complete meme. The main reason I'm putting it up there is because uh, it would disappoint the, uh, the internet's father figure, Joshua Graham, and I don't want to disappoint him, so... Yeah, it's going into S tier. If you want to play a game where the 1911 is more than just a complete meme, let's talk about Enlisted. Enlisted is a free-to-play first-person shooter that combines PvE and PvP combat, resulting in massive battles that include hundreds of soldiers. Players lead their own AI squads and recreations of historic campaigns from every theater of World War II. Whether you want to fight on the frozen outskirts of Moscow or the sweltering tropics of the Pacific, this game has you covered. Each of these campaigns might as well be their own individual game with unique uniforms, weapons, and vehicles. I personally love how historical authenticity has been taken into consideration. Why would you use a setting if you're not going to commit to it? The game is approachable for all types of players and is available on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Play for free now using my link below which will also net you a bonus of extra soldiers, weapons, and a premium account. And thank you to Enlisted for sponsoring this video. All right, now we get to actually talk about some of the interesting stuff, the submachine guns. There have been a lot of changes involving submachine guns in recent history, and I, for one, am very, very happy about that. We're gonna start with the ones that haven't changed much, uh, the MP7s. The MP7 is just good. There is a reason that every person, every streamer who takes this game seriously, every person who takes this game seriously, they all have used it at some point because it's just really freaking good. So the MP7 uh, is going into S tier, both of them. They're really good. The P90 has remained remarkably consistent. It, I don't think, has really suffered many changes at all. And, um... It's a really, really good submachine gun. The only thing I can fault it for is it's difficult to use as a solo because the magazines take 10 years to pack. So yeah, that, that can be very frustrating. And if you're a solo, you're completely vulnerable during that time and it's annoying and it's terrible and it's, it's like watching paint dry, it sucks. So that is the only thing I can fault it for, but otherwise it's a very good and versatile weapon. It's going into A tier. Uh, a relatively newer weapon, the SR-2M, I think the way that most people decide whether they're using this or the MP7 is just what ammo is not sold out and is available right now. That's that's pretty much the remarkable difference. The MP7 is, I'd say, slightly better because it has um, a higher magazine capacity, but otherwise this thing is just... It's just good. It's also going into S tier. Um, the Vector 45. Unfortunately, this thing suffered from the ammo changes. 45 AECP AP was removed from uh, traders, which makes it really hard to feed this thing. It can still just tear through people by sheer volume of fire with FMJ, but it's not ideal. So I can't give it the original A and S tier it used to have. It's it's going to go into B tier. Joining it in B tier is the uh, the PP91, uh, the Keter, and the third one. I don't. I think it's the Klin. They're good. I'm not a fan of them. I know people love to use them for leg meta. Personally, I don't like them that much, but I understand their appeal. That is gonna go into B tier. Um, the PPSH, unless you're huffing Stellinium, there's not much of a reason to use it. Its whole big thing was that it could have a 71 round drum mag, but its ammo is not the best. It's not the best, but it's alright. I'm gonna throw it into C tier. And then we have the UMP. I hate this weapon. So much. I am so glad that 45 ACP AP was removed from Peacekeeper, because it meant that this thing would actually stop being used. 
gun. This thing was everywhere and it was so unfun to fight against because the ammo would rip through your armor super easily, but it would also black your limbs instantaneously. And then it would hit you with this massive aim punch. So it was, it was just an unfun weapon to fight against. It's like, great, why would you use anything other than that? I am so glad that it got neutered into the floor, go into D tier and don't come back, stay there. All right, moving on to the nine millimeter SMGs. Um, they're actually good again. One, because all the recoil was changed and two, because AP 6.3 doesn't cost like seven to $12 a round anymore. Why was that a thing? Now it's like less than $3 a round, which is a much better price. And the MP5 is fantastic again. You turn this thing into an MP5 SD, you slap a 2X on it, and you have a uh, very consistent shooting SMG that you can either use to just go through armor because you're hitting the same place over and over and over again, or you could just use it to drag over heads, and it, it's really fun to use again. I highly recommend you try it. I've already made an entire video on it, so I won't talk about it too much more, but yeah, it's great. That thing's going into A tier. Then we have the 9mm Vector. Um, I'm gonna be real, I don't like this thing that much. Too sweaty for my own personal taste. I just don't think it's very fun to use. Um, and also, I think the MP7 is just straight up better. But if you wanna use it, you can. It's a solid weapon. Again, we're gonna put that into A tier. The PV-19. I know there are people who really, really like this thing. Personally, I'm not a huge fan, but it, it works. I just think it's worse than the, I think it's kind of just a worse MP5, but you do you. I'm gonna put that into C tier. The Saiga 9, it's a semi-automatic PP-19. It's, it's just worse. That thing's going into D tier. Then we have what is probably gonna be a point of contention on this video. Um, the STM-9. Personally, I don't like this thing that much. I know a lot of people like it because they think it's the ultimate just head clicker in Escape from Tarkov. I think there are weapons that both do it better and just have ammo that can actually pen stuff. So I don't see it. It's it's gonna go into C tier. Uh, the MP9, it's good, but unfortunately it is completely overshadowed by another weapon. So that that's just gonna have to, it's, it's a good weapon, so it's going into B tier, but once again, there's no reason to use it when the MP9-N just exists. The MP9-N is stupid. 1100 rounds per minute is absurd and it tears through everything like nobody's business. It's incredibly lightweight. It is dirt cheap. It's like 20,000 rubles on the flea market. It's, I love this thing. It's so much fun. Uh, you do rip through ammo incredibly fast. It is 1100 rounds per minute. That's the only big issue with it, but you know, in my opinion, it's worth, it's worth that. So I'm, I'm, I'm throwing this into S tier. Then we have the MP5K. Um, God, this thing sucks. Can we please, please get uh, some kind of stock attachment for this? Please, like I, I've seen them. I think they exist on the internet. A collapsing stock would be really awesome to just throw on this thing and you have a short little decent SMG. It's 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 obviously not gonna be fantastic because you can't put any muzzle attachments on it, but it would be pretty cool. So yeah, without a stock, that thing is gonna have to go into D tier. Nobody uses it. So I forgot to rank the MPX and honestly, no surprise there considering that it is just an extremely underwhelming weapon right now. Even when fully modded down to 22 recoil, it feels really wonky and just isn't as good as the MP5. And considering that it is fairly expensive to get it to that point, it's overall just a disappointment. So yeah, MPX is gonna get a D tier. All right, and moving into the category that people probably care about the most, the assault rifles. Um, I'm gonna start out with S tier because there's some things that just do not change. Uh, the DT MDR that is in 762 by 51, the black MDR, yeah, that's an automatic S tier. There's no surprise there. People have been using it for a while and they will continue to do so. Then we have the RD704. It's meta, it's going up there, it's really good. Then we have the CMMG Mutant, which is also meta. Personally, I don't see why you would use the Mutant over the RD704. I mean, I know it has 50 more rounds per minute, but it's also like 200,000 more rubles. I, I guess if you're using those, money isn't really a concern anymore, but personally, I'm not a huge fan. It's still gonna go into S tier though, because it's it's just good. 
The Ash-12 is a weapon that I dearly love, and which is why I'm so sad to say, it's basically unusable now. They, the only way to get good ammo for this thing, PS-12B, is to uh, craft it, and it takes way too long, and it gives you 80 bullets. What am I gonna do with 80 bullets? Okay, I can fill four mags and have no spare. Fantastic. Now I have to craft for several days just to be able to run this thing a couple of times. Very disappointing. It makes me so sad. Um, cause it's a fun gun, but the, it, it, there's just not much of a reason to use it. And it wasn't even like hugely meta before. So it's like, why, why did they do that? I don't know, but for now the thing, it's probably like an A tier weapon, but it's gonna go in a D tier. So because you can't really use it. The AS Val is finally, you know, it's in a pretty good spot. It feels like a good weapon. Um, it's just unfortunate that when you account for the price of the ammo, the gun itself and the magazines, it becomes extremely expensive to the point that a lot of people choose to not run it because they just don't think it's worth the price of admission, which, I completely understand. It's a good weapon, it, it's fairly serviceable in game, but the price is just too high on it, in my opinion. So that's gonna have to go into B tier. Um, the M4 is back on top again after being completely terrible for a little bit, which is good to see. Um, wh what is there to say about it? It fires quickly, it does decent damage, it has good solid ammo, and it is uh, versatile, extremely versatile in basically any situation you can use it so yeah it's going into s tier um then we have the hk416 i don't like the hk i i still think its recoil is a little bit goofy especially for how much you put into it and i think it's just way too expensive and gives you barely any advantage over the m4 personally i just don't see a reason to use it so i'm gonna put it into c tier is it good sure is it excessive? Absolutely. Joining the HK416, we have another HK product, the G36. Look, I love the G36. I love the gun itself. I love the way it looks. I used it all the way back in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare and fell in love with it there. It's not the best in Tarkov. There are other options that are better and they'll do it for cheaper, such as the DTMDR. So unfortunately, it's also gonna have to go into C tier. Uh, the DTMDR, it's, it's a solid weapon. It's it's the budget 5.56. It's, it's cheap, it's easy to mod, and you can get it to a very solid point without putting too much work into it. So it's just, once again, it's versatile. It's going into A tier. Another bullpup that I think is treated a bit harshly nowadays is the AUG. Um, okay, the AUG A1 is used almost exclusively by people who just love older firearms and want to use them. If Tarkov added an M16 from Vietnam with 20 round mags, that's all this person would use. So if you're using the AUG A1, I see it and I respect it. From a practical standpoint, the sight is just not comparable to modern optics, obviously, even in game, so it's not the best. But the AUG A3 is actually pretty solid. I used it and I don't know. I liked it a lot. It felt good. The horizontal recoil isn't as severe as it used to be. And and it's just as cheap, if not cheaper, than the MDR to get a suppressed version that gets to like 39 to 40 recoil. So if you haven't used the AUG A3 in a while, I suggest you try it. It's definitely not as bad as it used to be. And it's a fairly solid weapon now. So I'm putting it into B tier. The MCX is just good. Like... Even before, it was kind of just a beefier version of the M4, but nowadays, it, the recoil, you can get super low and it feels really, really nice. And they added the ammo CBJ, I think. So it's a very accessible ammo that is just better than 5.56. The gun still handles very similarly to an M4. It's slightly different, but it's mostly the same and it just feels good. Uh, yeah, going into A tier. If you haven't picked up the MCX yet, I suggest you do. The Scar L is in kind of a weird place. The Scar L was used by a lot of people as the the 5.56 replacement for the M4 and all the other 5.56s when they were just completely sucking terribly. The Scar uh, the Scar L was the only one that was really quite good. Now that all of those other 5.56s are actually good again, it leaves it in an awkward place. It has a lower fire rate and, in my opinion, it just 
it isn't the best. It can't really compare to the M4 and even the DTMDR, in my opinion, is just better, so the Scar L is going to have to go into B tier. And then we have two 308 weapons, uh, the SA-58 and the Scar H. I'm going to talk about the SA-58 first, since I have more experience with it. The SA-58 is actually quite usable again. It wasn't miserable. The recoil wasn't completely abhorrent. It actually feels pretty good again. That being said, you can't use it on full auto when you're in the open. Um, you have to use it on semi-auto. You basically have to use it as a DMR when you're shooting at longer ranges. And then when you start to get close is when you get to click the fun switch on and you have a good time. And oh boy, does this thing absolutely clean house at close range. Absolutely love it. It is fantastic. The Scar H kind of feels like a DMR that has this emergency switch when someone gets closer than you expected them to. It's still very, very good, but ultimately what I think the major difference between these two is, is the SA-58 is for people who are playing aggressively and want to get in close, while also having a very solid long range package, whereas the Scar H felt like, I want to use a DMR, but if someone gets close to me, I want to have full auto as a backup. So, I guess it's for more reserved players. Both of them are gonna go into, I'm gonna say A tier. Ultimately, it's just gonna come down to personal preference as to which one you're gonna choose. All right, rounding off the assault rifle category with the AKs. Um, the AK-74, I feel, is just a good baseline weapon to compare all the other weapons in Tarkov to. Um, it's a solid weapon. I'm gonna say it's an A to B tier. Um, I tend to lean more towards A, but I don't think I can quite fully commit to that, so it's just gonna rest between the two. It's a solid weapon, and it'll service you well. Then we have the AKM. 762 by 39 pp is just really freaking good and so is bp ammo so yeah this the akm is going into a tier it's really powerful not quite as good as the rd704 mutant but it's still quite good the ak103 it's a folding stock akm but just not as good i don't see a huge reason to use it but i guess if you have one lying around in your stash go for it that's a that's a b tier weapon uh then we have the akms you're doing Punisher Part 1. I, I don't know why you would use this. It's just... Why? Uh, so yeah, that's going into D tier. Then we have the AKS-74U. Why is this weapon so good? This is something that is genuinely baffling to me, and I don't understand. Why is it that a shortened AKS-74U, when you buy it from proper stock, has better recoil than a full-length AK-74 with a fixed stock. I, I don't understand why that's a thing, but it is. The AKS-74U is so easy to mod into low recoil, it's actually stupid. You put the JMAC Customs Brake on it and a butt pad on it, and it's like 48 recoil. It's absurdly good. This thing, yeah, it's going into S tier. It's just, why? Uh, the AK-12. I don't like it that much. I know it shoots faster than the other uh, AKs, but first of all, it can't accept the muzzle devices of the other AKs, and those muzzle devices are obscenely good, so that's already a huge problem, and it can't take the better stocks of the other AKs. So it doesn't really have much modularity, and its own muzzle devices aren't the best. I think the initial recoil is a bit jumpy. It feels goofy. The only the only time I've used it is in the early wipe because it has very low recoil stock, but it can't match the lower recoil of other AKs. So in the late wipe, it kind of seems worse than the other AKs, which is goofy because it's supposed to be a late wipe AK. I don't I don't know what they were doing, but yeah. It's, I don't like it that much. It's going into C tier. Then we have the AK-101 and AK-102. If you want a slower shooting 5.56 that is just a laser beam, these are your options. In my opinion, these make the Scar L basically worthless. They're not that expensive and you can mod them to shoot laser beam flat. What else is there to say? They hover between A tier and S tier. They're really good. I'm noticing a trend where the weapons I forget to rank are the ones that are completely outshined by their counterparts. Um, the AK-104 was never really anything all that special, however, it does have the novelty of being a short 7.62x39 AK whilst also being a lot cheaper than the RD-704, 
and because of that, I will bump it up to C tier. The AK-105, however, is just not good. It doesn't really have a reason to exist, and it does not compare to the absolute powerhouse that is the AKS-74U. So that thing is getting a D tier. And moving on to the designated marksman rifles, I'm gonna start with the VSS, since it has the exact same ranking as the SVAL. Um, yeah, it's a good weapon that is unfortunately hampered by the price of its magazines and ammo, so a lot of people just don't see it as worthwhile to run. But if you do put in the money, it's not gonna let you down. So, yeah, it's, it's a B-tier weapon. Then we have the Mark 18. If you're willing to kill Sturman 20 times, then... Yeah, I feel like you've earned the right to purchase this thing. And for a lot of people, it's worthwhile, considering that if you get hit by it, it just tears you in half. It's it's terrifying. Uh, that thing's going into S tier for sure. Then we have the SR-25. Yeah, it's going into S tier. It's versatile. It's relatively inexpensive as far as DMRs go. And it's just good. There isn't much else to say about it other than it's good. There's a reason so many people use it. It's going into S tier. Then we have the RSAS. Um, yeah, it's good, but the SR-25 is cheaper and is basically the same exact thing. I've heard a host of reasons that people use it from the ADS feeling smoother to the hip fire being more accurate. I don't know. I prefer the SR-25 and I think the SR-25 makes this kind of unnecessary to purchase so yeah the rsas is going to go into b tier is it a good weapon sure is there much of a reason to use it and pay more for it over an sr25 i don't think so uh the g28 suffers the exact same issues as the rsas except worse i get it's like a lighter build and it's gucci and it looks good um nah man this thing is this thing's going into c tier like it's good but if you find it go for it but why would you spend 300,000 rubles on it? The SVD. It kicks like a mule. It hits like a freight train. It's relatively inexpensive. I think you can, if you get lucky, you can mod them out for like 150 to 180. Um, yeah, A tier weapon. The M1A. I personally prefer the SR25, but if I want to run a more aggressive DMR that I just mod to stupidly low recoil and strap a 50 rounder into, then the M1A is going to serve you well. It's kind of ungodly how low you can get the recoil on this thing, considering it's a 308, but you know, whatever. It's just a good thing we don't have a shoestring to turn this into a machine gun, otherwise it would easily be the best weapon in the game. So that's gonna go into A tier. Not quite S because I don't think it's quite as versatile and it is pretty expensive to mod out, but still very solid. The ADAR, personally, I just love the ADAR in general. I love semi-automatics in this game. I think they're very satisfying to use, but the ADAR has a very important merit. M856A1, this wipe was a Peacekeeper 2 unlock. That is insanely early on to get an ammo that honestly will serve you decently well all the way to the end of the wipe. It starts to struggle a little bit uh, once people start getting tier 5 and 6 armor, but that's not exactly a common occurrence nowadays. So for the 90% of engagements that happen where you're fighting people with tier 4 armor or below, M856A1 will serve you well. And you're able to get that super early on, and in those days the ADAR is going to be a very solid option. I love the ADAR, and that ammo being unlocked even earlier just made it much better. It's going into A tier. The Vepr KM. The Vepr KM is the weapon that gets me through the first few days of wipe. Just when, when you do not have access to really any good ammo, this thing is such a solid choice. As soon as I find a scav that has PS rounds, I'm using this. It's really, really good for those first few days, and if you're struggling or if you're failing to gain progress early on, this is the weapon you need to pick up. Uh, it does drop off completely after that point, so I can't put it super high, but I think A tier. No, no, not, not A tier. B tier. It's going into B tier. This is what happens when you improv for two hours straight. The VPO 209. It has absurd recoil, but it hits like a sledgehammer. It, it's a it's a C tier gun. It's a goofy gun for goofy people. Not meant to really be used seriously, but is surprisingly terrifying when you start getting shot at by it. Both of the SKSs are gonna go into C tier. Um, they're quite good, like in the first day, because of the fact that Peacekeeper uh, sells 20 round magazines for the SKS immediately. 
but there's also the fact that Proper doesn't sell PS at Tier 1 anymore, so... The OPSKS used to be the early wipe DMR of choice for basically everyone, but it was usurped, so... Unfortunately, those are gonna go into C tier. The SVT-40 is what replaced the OPSKS. When this thing launched on the wipe, holy crap, was it just an absurdly good weapon. It, it got nerfed a fair bit, but it's still pretty solid as a DMR and as a close range weapon. Um, the recoil is a bit worse now, so I'm not gonna, I was originally gonna put it in S, I don't think it deserves that anymore, but I will put it in A tier just because it's, it's really good for its price and how early it's available. I don't know how this qualifies as an a assault carbine, but you know, that's what Tarkov said, so that's how I'm doing it. A lot of people see this as a meme weapon, but it's terrifying to go up against. That much um, 760x54 being dumped at you that quickly by people who use it like it's an SMG, it's spooky. It is scary to come up against, and that thing is going into S tier. The VPO 101, garbage it's it hasn't been good for a long time and it's even worse now that the svt just exists that thing is going into f tier the rfb is kind of a sad case it's just completely worthless nowadays it, it used to be quite good back when m80 was i think way back when it was like a loyalty level two and then it became loyalty level three and now that it's a loyalty level four and is basically a necessity for 308 weapons the RFB is just completely pointless, since by the time you unlock M80, you unlock basically every solid 308 weapon in the game, and this budget blaster is just completely left in the dust. It is also going to go into F tier because it doesn't have a reason to exist anymore. Uh, the TX-15, it also doesn't have much of a reason to exist, except for the fact that it looks really, really good, and it's incredibly satisfying, so... Yeah, that thing's gonna go into B tier for the drip factor alone. It's an excellent way to burn a lot of money if you have it on hand. And then rounding off the assault carbines is gonna be the SAG 545s. These are the superior head tappers, in my opinion, to the STM. They get really low recoil, and the best part is, is their ammo can actually penetrate through armor pretty easily, unlike AP 6.3. AP 6.3 can pen armor if you use a lot of AP 6.3. That's kind of hard to do if you're using an STM that fires on semi-automatic only. But 545 is BS ammo, which is really good at piercing armor. It has BT ammo, which is freaking everywhere, and is still really good at getting through armor. So, yeah, these are my preferred head tappers of choice that are also really good for just chest. These things are gonna go into S tier. The AXMC. It can tear you in half, but slightly slower than the Mjolnir can. It's going into S tier. Then we have the VPO215 incredibly cheap and carries an ammo that packs a wallop once you unlock AP-M, going into A tier. The T5000, pretty cheap and pretty solid, A tier. DVL-10, very satisfying weapon, feels great to use, and has solid ergo, going into A tier. Sniper Mosin, good for leveling sniper skill early on and also is just satisfying to use with the PU scope, an effective early game sniper rifle, it's going into B tier. Uh, the Mosin Carbine, not not the best. There are better options, um, but still a decent weapon if you can hit your shots. Gonna go into C tier. Uh, the M700, uh, not too much of a reason to use it over the other 308 snipers, especially considering the fact that, you know, a T5000 you can get pretty inexpensive off the flea market, and all you have to do is put a suppressor on it and a scope, and you're good to go. Whereas with the M700, you have to get the scope, change out the stock, and put a suppressor, and it all adds up to more than the T5000, so not too much of a reason to use it, but still solid. I'm gonna put it into B tier. Then we have the SV98. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good rifle, and it will serve you well, and what's really nice about it is you can get its ammo consistently way before you can get 308 consistently, so it's going into A tier. All right, and specialty weapons. Um, we're gonna start with the RPK-16 since it's barely a specialty weapon. I just put it here because it's labeled as an LMG. There is not much of a difference between this thing and just the AKs in Tarkov. Um, LMGs don't really get any special treatment when it comes to overheating or jamming, I don't think. So yeah, it basically is just another AK-74. So it's gonna go between A and B tier. Then we have the uh, PKM and PKP. 
These would be terrifying if they weren't so heavy that no one carries them around. First of all, they're hard to get because you can only get them from killing Caban, so people don't get them that often. And then when they do get them, they don't bring them into raid that often because they're just clunky, they're hard to carry, and if you bring it, you're gonna have a hard time picking up loot and keeping up with your squad mates. And bringing this thing in solo is practically a death sentence. Unless you take it on factory, where you're basically invincible. I mean, yeah, it would be cool if if you could carry it around and really use it. Um, but for now, it's just both of them are going to go into B tier. The FNGL40. Wow, this thing just kind of sucks, doesn't it? The only ways I know of to get this is to either get it off of Big Pipe or to do the Peacekeeper trade, which you get after Wet Job Part 6. It's a fairly late game thing. And it's a single shot grenade launcher that takes up another weapon slot. This thing was made terrible when underbarrel grenade launchers were added and just completely replaced it. You can find a better, more convenient option that will do the exact same thing as this in a box somewhere. I have found several. It's it's really yeah, this thing is just bad. It's it it's from an era of Tarkov when we all thought GLs would be completely overpowered. And it, it, it was a bit overpowered, but it was fun. And nowadays, it's just completely worthless. So that thing is going into F tier. Uh, then we have the M32 grenade launcher. The only way I know of to get this is to get it off of Big Pipe. And the difference between this and the FNGL40 is that if you encounter this thing, it's absolutely terrifying. So, yeah, I'm glad this thing is exceedingly rare because if someone is bringing this in, they're kind of coming with their full squad to keep them alive, and they are going to be merciless with how many grenades they dump on you. So, yeah, I'm putting that into S tier. Six impact grenades flying straight at you. Come on. And that is gonna about do it. Uh, once again, thank you to Enlisted for sponsoring this video. Using my link below, you can download the game for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. And it'll also net you a bonus of extra soldiers, weapons, and a premium account. But with all that out of the way, just thank you so, so much for watching. Especially all the way to the end of this long freaking video. Um, I really, really hope you enjoyed.